My name is James Turner. I'm the author of The Promise of Wilderness. One of the first wilderness areas I ever visited was the Dolly Sods in West Virginia. I went there looking for wilderness, but what caught my eye was a sign at the trailhead, and it read, warning, highly explosive live bombs. Well, that sign was a clue to the long history of human use that has shaped the Dolly Sods. What is now protected as a wilderness area had been logged in the 19th century grazed in the early 20th century, and shelled by army recruits training for World War II. The Dolly Sods are a spectacular mountain highlands today, but the landscape is riddled with human history. Well, that realization has sparked my interest in the different ways that Americans have understood and valued wilderness. To Athabascan Indians in Alaska, wilderness is a vital part of their culture and subsistence practices. To conservation biologists, it is a cornerstone of biodiversity conservation. To a backpacker in the lower 48, it offers a retreat to seemingly pristine wild lands. And to a Westerner who depends on the public lands for pasture or timber, it may represent the overreach of the federal government. Well, since 1964, such competing ideas have had important consequences. That year, Lyndon Johnson signed into law the Wilderness Act and created the National Wilderness Preservation System. But the Wilderness Act did more than just define wilderness. It also set in motion a process for expanding the wilderness system. So three overlapping stories are at the heart of this book. First, this book is about the expansion of the wilderness system. Protecting the public lands has never been easy. It often pit local versus national interests resource industries against environmentalists, and Republicans against Democrats. But at key moments, Congress overcame such differences to pass far-reaching wilderness legislation, protecting iconic places such as Alaska and little-known places such as the Great Swamp in New Jersey. All told, between 1964 and 2010, the wilderness system grew more than tenfold, from 9.1 to more than 109 million acres in size. Second, this book is about the transformation of American environmental advocacy. In the 1960s, the wilderness movement was as much about citizen activism as it was about land preservation. That changed in the 1970s and 1980s when national groups like the Wilderness Society and the Sierra Club emerged as powerful and professional environmental lobbies. But since the 1980s, a new surge of grassroots wilderness groups proliferated, transforming the conceptual and tactical landscape of wilderness advocacy. Third, this book is about how environmental politics was both shaped by and shaped American politics more broadly. For instance, populist opponents of environmental protection organized effectively in the 1980s. The Sagebrush Rebellion and the Wise Use Movement drew upon the rising tide of conservatism nationwide. But at key moments, they contributed to the Republican Party's successes, especially in the American West. Well, let me close with one final lesson that emerges from this book. On a map, the wilderness system is clearly marked and seemingly well protected from future challenges and threats. In truth, the health of the nation's wilderness depends on the health of the larger landscapes in which it is embedded. Protecting wilderness means protecting the surrounding public lands on which the water, wildlife, and aesthetics of wilderness depend. Protecting wilderness means cultivating a rural landscape and economy in which people can work the land sustainably. Protecting wilderness means engaging in other environmental issues, such as climate change, which will transform even the wildest of places. And finally, protecting wilderness means fostering a healthy political landscape, too. All of that is a part of the promise of wilderness.